Hey everybody, this is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, and today we're going to be doing the third installment within my Song a Week tutorial series. And uh, yeah, to start everything off here, I have uh, Basement Love in the studio with me today. He's got his guitar with him. We're taking the sample from the first Song a Week, we're going to be resampling it and putting it into some sort of electronic track, dare I say an EDM track, and uh, yeah, we're going to see what happens. That being said, we want to make sure that the song is nice and detailed, fat and full, and I happen to know that when I'm running my video uh, editing software with my audio software, I'm going to get some glitches. I don't want to put you guys through that, neither does Jake. So we're going to record it, and then afterwards we're going to take you through it, and I kind of show you a little bit of what we did. So uh, yeah, stay posted. All right, hello. Let's get through the third song a week uh, walkthrough. And this one was done with Basement Love, and it was a resampling of the first song a week. And the whole point of it was to take the classical vibe of the first song and put it into some sort of house style track or electronic track. In this case, we did something at around, yet again, 110 beats per minute. And uh, we went with a funkier sort of vibe with uh, some nice funky synths and guitar and some popping and slapping bass. And let's get through it. Here's what's going on. So uh, we have some side chaining up at the top, just a four to the floor click of some sort. Not a full kick drum because the tails are a bit too long and that can mess things up. So just a little click of some sort. Um, and then some drums. The drums, there's nothing too crazy going on. We have, I'll play the drums by themselves. I'll play it when it kicks in. Here it is. So you can hear there's quite a bit of reverb on the clap. Aside from that, it's just a basic sort of drum beat, nothing too intense, it's a little bit of swing on the hi-hats. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I was to go over to the clap, you'll notice that we have a audio rack here with a clean channel and a reverb channel. So for the reverb settings, we went with a fairly long decay, ah, medium long anyway, two point, basically two and a half seconds, 2.41. Size is close to medium, a little bit of a trim off the bottom and the top for the onboard EQ here. Uh, nothing too intense going on in the diffusion network. Uh, quite a bit of reflection and a little bit of extra diffusion. Um, whenever I jam with Jake, he always likes to do a little bit more uh, reflection and diffusion. So um, he kind of got me into that sort of more uh, thicker reverb sound. Um, if I was to continue on, let's keep going. So you know what? Let's listen to it from the beginning and kind of stop and go as, uh, as we go through it. So let's talk about that to start. Oh shoot, I just realized something you guys might not have been able to see. Those reverb settings. I'm going to pop it over a little bit more. So if you need to take a little screenshot or whatever, if you did like the reverb settings on that clap, I'll try to keep things more onto the left side from now on. Again, continuing on, uh, we have this guitar part that we added. <laughs> So Jake uh, basically one take to this. He just played it really quick, got it, uh, I think, well, he, we did one take. He probably played like four or five loops through and we took the best one. And one thing that he does that I really like is he'll command you, which is to quantize in Ableton, he'll, com he'll command you or he'll quantize information uh, as a wave and it'll quantize it based on these warp markers. And that's, that's a really cool thing. The same way you can quantize MIDI, you can quantize audio. Um, so he did that, not that he needed it much, but just to clean it up a little bit. He's a very good player. And then uh, I took a, this little thing at the end here. There's a couple little clips and I just kind of chopped little parts of his playing and, uh, and rearranged it so we get that sort of idea. Because he did play some fills and I was happy with them, but I almost wanted a little bit more of a produced sort of sound, somewhere between a really organic single take and also a little bit more produced as well. So that's the guitar that we added over top and then we kind of go about it in little tiny bits later. You'll hear it something like this. <laughs> that sort of idea. So over the intro, there was the guitar and the claps that we added, and then the rest was all just quite simply. <laughs> Song of week number one, right? So then again, the drop kicks in after some little lasery sounds. So yeah, we got some just little effects that we put in there, um, yeah. And that sound there comes from 
bit crushing. So what I did was I threw a Redux onto our master channel and then I automated the sampling. We made sure to set it to soft hard. If you set it hard, which is what it's naturally set to, I believe you, um, by changing this knob, just the tiniest bit, the down sampling, you get a really exaggerated effect. And I wanted to be able to kind of have something a bit softer that felt not too video gamey, I guess you could say, but just some sort of crunchy sort of wrap up effect. Uh, so that's what we had there mixed with the uh, lasery sounds that we had and then here's the drop <laughs> so let's go through those layers past that it's just a lot of repetition so i'll just uh loop this section here and i'll go through it bit by bit so here's the drums adding in a hi-hat Adding in the guitar. Now notice the guitar sounds a little squash this first time. So you get bumping. That first note's really popping through and the rest not so much. It's because I have a compressor set up to sidechain, in other words, get quieter whenever the, I should say sidechain compress, whenever the uh, slap bass kicks in. And we're getting to that, but I'll preview that now. It's by itself. There's some redux on there to give it a bit of that gamey sort of sound. Just a little bit more crunch more than anything. So there's that. And then, um, so I played that popping and slapping part on uh, on a keyboard using the Rickenbacker bass through Native Instruments. Uh, I think it was the Rickenbacker. It was one of those ones. There's only one that has the popping and slapping feature. And I made sure to do uh, both the pickups or both pickup options. And then there was a bass that we added. Um, nothing too intense. And then a sub. That's just massive doing its thing. And then Jake created this sort of disclosure-ish sort of effect. Uh, again, feel free to take a screenshot of this. I'm sure there's some stuff going on behind the scenes, but he came up with this and then I came up with a little keyboard part for it. Listening to it now, I'd, I'd probably clean up the release a little bit. There's a little bit of extra noise, almost like a pitched reverby sort of effect afterwards. But that's the thing with Song of Week is you don't really go back and fix these. You just keep putting them out. And uh, I mean, at this point, I'm still really happy with the way it turned out. And in the mix, you don't really hear it too much. But that's just me getting picky, I guess. And then here's the sample. We actually took the sample and... We did the classic sort of automated auto filter sort of effect within a lot of the newer genres that are coming out, uh, like future bass and that kind of stuff, where you take a, a filter and you bring it down. In this case, we brought it down to about just close to 300 hertz. We opened up the envelope considerably and we sidechained it from our sidechain channel, SC, which you might remember is up here. And it's just a four to the four sort of click. Um, and then what we got was something like this. So you can hear it's kind of wow, wow, kind of has a bit of a pulse to it. Nothing too intense. We could overdo that a little bit if I was to go back here. And so more of the high end is opening up, but we wanted it nice and subtle. And there's another, uh, there's enough other instruments that are sitting up in the mid highs and the highs that we wanted to kind of keep that out of the way and just fill in the low mids without getting too muddy. So, and I think I did at the end here, I copied that and then I pitched it up that kind of idea. Let me double check. Actually, no, we just went through and we found different uh, different chords from the original sample and just kind of chopped them up and put them uh, in back-to-back, uh, -back basically, anyway. Uh, and then that was the guitar. So yeah, let's hear the whole thing together again. That's all the parts uh, separately. Here they are. <laughs> nice. 
And for anybody that's been keeping up with these videos, if you're wondering, why isn't Josh having the computer issues he was having before? It's because I switched over to my MacBook Pro. Thank you, Apple. You're so consistent. My Hackintosh is great, but I still have to work some stuff out uh, to get it to work better for these videos. I'm also looking into upgrading this whole setup so I'll be able to keep these videos nice and consistent to the professional quality that I'm looking for. But... I figure, hey, I could have started these videos a year from now where everything was set up or work my way through the technical difficulties. I don't mind if people come back and see all that kind of stuff because it goes to show you got to start from somewhere, right? So anyway, that continues on. And then one of my favorite parts is these little synth lines that I added here. These were kind of a one take. Actually, my buddy Sean came by, uh, Sean Harvey, right before I recorded these. We all got talking about... Uh, Basement Love and Sean when they were back at Metalworks uh, recording together and studying together. And uh, actually, Sean and I have a business together, Shameless Self Promotion. Check out RemixMyBand.com. The idea of the website that we've created is uh, if you're a producer or an artist, I have to separate this a bit. If you're a producer and you, you have the ability to remix works, you put your stuff up on our site and then people can search for you through a genre um, catalog. So if someone wants a jazzy dubstep remix of their new folk song they would type in jazz dubstep and if those fall underneath the five genres that you produce under you'll come up within that list people can listen to your portfolio and if they like you they can hire you through the site which is nice and safe and secure all through stripe and uh, sean is doing all the front end work and working with a buddy of ours brendan for the the back end work as well too so check out remixmyband.com it's a great way as a producer to make a little bit of extra money and if you're an artist and or in a band and you're looking to remix one of your works go check it out currently um, all the producers on the site are there for free until around Christmas time so you won't have to offer them hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a work um, I, I would recommend maybe between 50 and 100 bucks just start to get the producers uh, rolling and uh, I mean it all depends if you find someone that's really really worth the extra money by all means you get what you pay for but uh, long story short if you want a, a remix done uh, you can check out the producers that we have and uh, it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg and you'll get a nice piece of work done in the end so again remix my band Dot com. If nothing else, just check it out. So here we go. Here's that synth line I was talking about. So notice the in and out of this line. I've done like a little... Is that not... Oh, here we go. Hold on. Yeah, so... My laptop's in the way, so... That sort of idea, so... Sliding up into the first note, kind of like a Hammond organ technique. So if we go into it, you can see this was all played and if anything, n not even quantized, I don't think. Um, yeah, just playing the G minor blue scale. And then it's harmonized in thirds here, which was kind of fun. All right, and then together. <laughs> And that takes us into the last part of the song, which is the second section of Saw 1. So it sounds like this. And then again, the bit crushing. That sort of idea goes back into the drop. And then the final drop... Uh, we decided not to throw in, like the second drop you were about to hear has that organ line again, or the synth line, I should say. And the last drop has something a little bit different. It has this end pad here. And this is, I believe, Absinthe? Yeah, Absinthe, another Native Instruments product. Shout out to Native Instruments. You guys have some great products. Um, yeah, so here is the end pad. <laughs> drop to a lower register here. Kind of sustains. Anyway, that takes it straight through to the end, just with some drums and a nice little DJ-friendly outro. That is it. That is the walkthrough for uh, Song of Week number three. Hopefully, you guys got some information from this. If you are curious about anything as to um, any of the specific settings in the song or 
automation or anything that I didn't cover within this video, please do comment and uh, I can try to give you as much info as I can if there's any techniques that you'd like to copy or learn from or develop as your own. Uh, that's why I do these videos is a free way to teach and to get a few uh, new students along the way and uh, just share some things that I would have loved to have known when I first started this stuff. So anyway, uh, one more time, my name is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.